let your ancient life-changing word impart. So wash us right now. Anoint us afresh. Open our ears and our hearts so that we might be receptive to your life-changing ancient words. And now, Lord Jesus, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, who is our strength and our glorious redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Some words from Mark 1 and 13. He was in the wilderness, 40 days tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. I speak now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Christ the King. Good morning. My sisters and my brothers, it is the day after. Yes, I know yesterday was, was long. Some still confess to a degree of tiredness. But even if we are tired and the day was long, worship calls us to a yet moment, eh? Yes. Yet will we praise our God. So that has to be our attitude today. And so family, on this first Sunday after Lent, our gospel resonates with this compelling truth. And the truth is this. The same spirit that descends upon Jesus at his baptism now drives Jesus into the loneliness of the wilderness. And so Christ the King, our wilderness experiences if they do anything for us, they ought to deepen our faith and help us to trust God even more. And so after his baptism, Jesus is driven, not just led, mind you, but driven into the wilderness by the same spirit that earlier descended upon him and conferred him God's profound blessing. You are my son. The beloved, brothers and sisters, we read this gospel year after year, and yet we hardly notice that Jesus' baptism came, that Jesus, after his baptism, the temptation came. And not only did it come, but during his baptism, Jesus received his identity or was given this special identity for all to see. And so may I suggest to us that something happened at our baptism. We were baptized and named as children of God and marked with the sign of Christ on our foreheads. And because of that identity, Christ the King, we should feel confident that we have what it takes to guide us through the challenges and struggles that await us on our journey through the wilderness. And so family, I have come to assure you as I assure myself that after our baptism, we too will experience the loneliness of the wilderness. And so you ask, Father Hutch, Brother Hutch, what is this wilderness to which you refer? The wilderness is the place of challenge. The wilderness is the place of struggle. The wilderness is the place of testing and temptation. But thanks be to God, the wilderness is also the place of purification. In the wilderness, brothers and sisters, we find out some stuff about ourselves. So the gospel challenges us today to make sense out of the 40 days of Lent. And if we are to make sense, we must devote ourselves to prayer, devote ourselves to study of God's word, devote ourselves to almsgiving, devote ourselves to solitude. But that's an ugly word now, you know. You suggesting, Father, I need to be by myself. Yeah, 
some moments alone with our God, eh? Where we hear him speak alone with God. Alone with God. Away from the TV. Away from our iPods. Hmm? Praise God. Away from MSN. Away from Instagram. Father, you may turn on us. Yeah! Alone with God. And so in these 40 days of focus and of centering our lives on Jesus Christ and trying to understand what God has called us to do and to be, we've got to push the world out and let Jesus in. And so family like Jesus, the wilderness, the period of struggle and temptation provided something essential to his ministry. And I'm convinced that it provides something essential to our ministry today. I've come to tell us, if we do not go in the wilderness, if there are no storms, if there are no tests, Christ the King, we have no testimony. So I've come to tell us that as we go through our valleys and cross the mountains, that some of the stuff we go through, other people go crazy. And you ain't go crazy, and yet you shut up your mouth and say you have nothing to thank God for. All of us Amen. have something to give God thanks for. Amen. Eh? Amen. Thank you for the temptations overcome. Yes. The battles won. Yes. Thank give you, God Lord. some praise. Amen. Temptations overcome. Y'all want to all face temptations. Amen. And so when our boyfriend or our girlfriend begged us and we were able to overcome, give God some praise that you kept your clothes on, eh? Amen. You still have your integrity. What a mighty God we serve, eh? Amen. And so the Holy Spirit's prompting of Jesus was not random. And when it prompts us, it is not random. The Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness with a purpose. And if we can imagine that for Jesus, think about your own case, eh? When we go into our, the wilderness, it is for a purpose. So I need to ask you, would you volunteer for the harsh reality of the wilderness? Even the strongest among us rarely volunteer to go into the wilderness. We don't even look for opportunities to struggle. Some of us would like a life free of struggles. But I need to say to us, as I say to myself, life comes replete with struggle. And so with our periods of trials and temptations of struggle, there's also some good news. Struggle don't just choose us, you know. Struggle ha struggles happen to make us better. So you struggled. I need to ask, are you better because of it? Or are you a bitter individual? Can you ever imagine this? That God, through his spirit, is still able to make use of us during our challenges. Romans 5, 3 and 5. And not only this, not only this, but we also exult in tribulations, knowing that the hell we gone through, eh? is able to bring about perseverance. And perseverance, proven character. And proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us, eh? And so Christ the King, struggles, trials, and misery that abound in the wilderness. Listen, don't wonder about it. Jesus went through it, we got to go through it too, eh? Yes. And so in light of that, yes. ask yourself this. During this dark, difficult period, that periods that sometimes come our way in our life, do you struggle to, to truly know Jesus for yourself? Even as he struggles to meet us where we are and to lift us up, you need to ask him, Lord, what would you have me do? And since you've asked him, what can you do? Ask 
kingdom do you have what it takes? And so I ask you, Christ the King, do you have what it takes? You say, Father, that's a hard question. Good. But I've come to tell us God is not looking for the most impressive people, you know. God is looking for ordinary people like you and me. Any ordinary people in the house today? People with bad ways sometimes. Any people with any persons with bad ways? Don't look at me like that. <coughs> any persons with bad ways sometimes? Any miserable people in the house sometimes? Any folks who say unkind stuff sometimes? Any people with picky hair in the house today, eh? Big nuts? Overweight? Ordinary people, eh? God wants to use you. And God is able to, to use us because, because God measures us by our hearts. By our hearts. So say, Lord, give me a clean heart, eh? So I could serve you. And so to the ordinary people in the house, God could use us. And God uses the ordinary people. Because ordinary people understand that you have to make yourselves available. God is looking for willing servants who will make themselves available to him for whatever he asks them to do. And so when the Lord called Isaiah, the prophet immediately responded, here am I, send me. Even though Isaiah had not yet heard the job description that found in Isaiah 6 and 8. And on any job, people go on now, they want to know what their job description is, eh? How long I go work? What are my days? Oh, Jesus. What is the pain? Is the union going to protect me if I get fired? Am I talking to anybody today? But Isaiah said, none of that Isaiah said, send me. Use me, hey? Eh? What else is, is God looking for? God is looking for people who are humble. 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 Scripture tells us God is opposed to the proud. And you got a lot of proud folks in church. Snooty individuals, eh? Who forget where they came from? Anybody like that in Christ the King Church? Walk around like you're all that, eh? That's crazy. Hmm. That's crazy. But God says, humble yourself. Humble yourself. And if you're humble, you'll understand that that all that you have came from God, you know. The breath I breathe, the clothes I have on, the shoes on my feet, eh? The clothes on my back, the job I have, eh? The couple of dollars in my pocketbook, it all came from God! All that I have comes from you, Lord. And so don't take no credit for yourself. When they get up in the morning and say, Lord, I just thank you for being my God. All that I have belongs to you, eh? Don't be proud. Because when you're proud like that and when you fall, oh Jesus, eh? People laugh hard at you. Let me tell you a thing or two about being proud. Since I got to talk with me, you got to talk with yourself. A crazy thing happened to me in 1975. When I came out of CC speeding, somebody put in my yearbook, most likely to succeed. And can I confess, I like all that sound. Not least likely, but most likely. So I was still cocky. That's really, man. Most likely to succeed. And I don't know what it is, but, but God has a sense of humor. And for a long time, he who was voted most likely to succeed did not succeed. God had a humble.
follow me yet. During my period in the wilderness, I came to Jesus as I was. And I had to. And so some of the same people who, who thought I was most likely started to come in. And I know he active in Bell Baptist Church. He teaches Sunday school. But he died, he still got to take care of him, eh? He ain't got no job. He ain't got no house. He ain't got no girlfriend. I believe that boy can go crazy, you know. <laughs> God had to humble me, eh? Humble me. And so as I look back, I say, Lord, I thank you for humbling me because I was a fool. Thought I was all that. So I say to you, don't fool yourself. Walk humbly before your God. And God has blessed you, say thanks. Thank you, Lord. Show your gratitude to him. Yes, eh? thank you, Jesus. Every day. Yes. Then watch God work. Mm. God can take a little can and make, make a lot. Eh? Amen. Sees God all by himself. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. So lest I keep you too long, God is also looking for people with purity. We are to truly serve God. One of the requirements for effective service is a pure life. And when I say a pure life, I ain't talking about perfection. But it is about having a heart bent towards obedience toward God. And this purity that God demands of us necessitates that we keep short accounts with God. So when we mess up, we confess right away and say, Lord, I messed up. Forgive me of my sins and renew a right spirit within me, hey? Sincere repentance. When we allow sin to remain in our lives, it hinders our usefulness. It deadens our spiritual sensitivity and quenches the Spirit's power to work in our lives. And so we got some people, and, and when I say we, I'm talking about me sometimes too, eh? We ain't no use to God because sin is in our lives. And they're not sensitive spiritually. And God's power cannot truly work. And all of us want God to truly work in us, eh? So Christ the King, I, I bring you some good news. The same Spirit that descended upon Jesus at his baptism and drove him out into the wilderness also accompanied Jesus during his time in the wilderness. So I've come to tell us, God will not abandon us as we go into the wilderness. But God sends us into the wilderness from time to time for our benefit and for the benefit of those around us. And that's good news, eh? That makes me happy. And so you go through the wilderness and you are disappointed. You go through the wilderness and you got to deal with your failures. failures. You, you go through the wilderness and you got to deal with heartache. You go through the wilderness and you got to deal with heartbreak. And this stuff may, may seem to kill us and, and rob us of our testimony, but, but the God we serve, even as we go through, gives us resurrection power to get up and to deal with our disappointments, to deal with our failures, to deal with our heartache, to deal with our heartbreaks. God is able. The same yesterday, today, and forever. God is able. Resurrection power. Anybody in the house in need of resurrection power today? Jesus is here right now. Jesus is here. And so give him praise always, eh? As you go through, give him praise. Because you can come through. After he has tried us, we shall come forth as pure gold. And there, there's something about gold, you know. You got to heat gold to, to, to make it what you want it to behave. 
Many you want good tea, you gotta do what with the tea bag, you gotta heat it up. And that gives us its taste. And so, thank God when you get some help. Because God is shaping us and making us. So family, I want all of us to look at our struggles. Look at them. And understand that our God is bigger than all of our struggles. Stand on the promises of God. If God promised to be with us, God will be with us. Whatever God promised, he's well able to perform. And this God we're talking about is the God who, who the word declares so loved, messed up, disappointed failures like us that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, and whosoever included this little barefoot boy from me in your street and bay down, believing in him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And so when God gives us the challenges that come our way, the pitfalls that we sometimes experience, God also gives us the courage to trust him even more. And so he says to us, do not fear. I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. And so Christ the King, my prayer for all of us is that we will not just survive the wilderness times of our lives, but we will emerge from the wilderness renewed in hope, renewed in faith, and with a renewed confidence in our God. And so I say stand on this promise during Lent from 2 Corinthians 10 and 13. No temptation has overtaken you, except what is common to mankind. And then hear God. And God is faithful, Christ the King. God will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. God will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, anybody been tempted lately? Anybody? Hmm. Tempted to cuss and fuss, eh? Anybody? Hmm. Somebody to insults you and you felt like speaking your mind, but, but when you, you, you hear in your mouth, but then you were tempted. tempted when your children are crazy and you feel hmm. like killing them, but when you were tempted, eh? Hmm. Hmm. Young ones, when your parents don't understand you and you feel like pouting and sulking and Speak in your mind, but when you were tempted, when that boss talked to you all kind of way, and you feel like getting your gun or your back from, but when you were tempted, <laughs> when you drive the busy streets of Nassau, and you obeyed all the rules, and that person behind you, blood behind you, pop, pop, and you walk, but when you were tempted, when you serve on the altar and you know you've been to all the practices and people who ain't been to practice on Saturday come and grab the cross and the turf and all the lamps and you want when you're tempted eh? when you come to church and you know you were shipped from Christ the King started in 1965 because you told me so yourself and that new member sitting in your pew? <laughs> when you're tempted, eh? When, when you serve as an usher? And Christ the King people talk to you any kind of way to the door when you're tempted. <laughs> when, when you sing and you know you practice hard. <laughs> and even after you practice, sometimes you don't hit the right notes, eh? And we express no appreciation. And you're tempted to leave the choir when you attempt. And so for me as a preacher, I stay up all night and I say, Lord, give me a word for these people. And some of y'all come to church and doing the crossword puzzle while I preach. 
and I will walk in the aisle and tell you all. Man, I am tempted, eh? And other times you're preaching, and, and people who can stay up all night and, and dancing in the club, but when you preach, go sleep. But when you attempt it, and so temptations come. But God is faithful. And so I hold on to the promises of God. And preach his word in season and out of season. When you sleep, I gotta preach. When you do your God's word, press up, preach. When you express your appreciation, preach. And you go back to me and say, I wonder where the bishop can send him away. I gotta still preach. <laughs> because God called me. Yes. And like Isaiah, yes. I said, Here am I, send me. Yes. So when we attempted, God provides a way of escape. Yes. So I, I need to tell you, you can. You, I don't know what it is, but, 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 but after you've had your mountaintop experiences and been alone with your God, Satan has a way of piling it on. But when you attempt to just understand that, that, that the wilderness was, was preparation. And because you've been prepared, you will have the right attitude when you attempt it. You just hold your mouth. Say, Lord, give me the right thing to say. Give me the right thing to say. So Christ the King, if there are no tests, there are no testimonies. So I, I need to ask anybody in the house for the testimony today. Amen. Anybody? Amen. Anybody? Be overcome by the word of our testimony. Amen. And the blood of the Lamb. Yes. So the, the scripture says, Jesus went into the wilderness. There were wild beasts. But it didn't stop there. I know some of you all missed that. Finish it. What else did it say? You all even remember that, eh? It says, and the angels waited for him. That's the word to us. When our temptations come, when the struggles come, the wilderness is, is a dry, cold, and a mean place. Angels will wait and minister to us. You believe that today? Yeah. Yes, maybe. So let's pray. Let's pray. And so our Father and our God, we first need to confess that there have been times when we've been tempted and we've let you down. Let you down in thought and word and certainly indeed. But we, 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 we ask now that you would forgive us of our failings and our shortcomings. That you would wash us afresh. And then, Lord Jesus, as we go through these 40 days of centering ourselves and focusing on what you've called us to do.